Okay. So next presentation is from South Africa region by Mr. Tadaju Soken Ibuiki from Cape Peninsula University of Technology. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. You guys are still awake. Great. <laughs> uh, I'm Ibuiki Tadaju Soken. I'm doing this to calibrate my nerves. And I will be talking about uh, the picture we have for Southern Africa region. So far, there are three countries working together. And I happen to be student uh, representative. South Africa, Zambia, Namibia are the most active. But we don't look at it as if we're driving a bus. It's a, it's a big collaboration. And we have a big picture that I hope to, to transmit to you as a model. Uh, what I'll talk about is the vision we have, this big picture, uh, the past, the present, and what we hope to, the way we hope to shape the future, and then conclude. Uh, you can read um, the vision. Please pay, pay attention to this new breed of space engineers. Uh, the truth is, I'm actually one of the first experiments. I sometimes consider myself as a lab rat because in my research I'm being trained as a hybrid between uh, material, uh, experimental material science, uh, radiation physics, uh, space science, uh, space uh, satellite engineering, uh, satellite systems engineering, and a fair amount of business awareness and entrepreneurship. The one disadvantage is that I find it hard to answer the question, what is it that you do exactly, you know? But at least I can sit at a number of tables and have some meaningful contribution. In this picture, uh, please pay attention to the central aspect, uh, space projects. This is an academic picture. Within an academic framework, we want to get to a point where in, with a central satellite engineering, satellite project or space project, there is an engineering branch that we're trying to promote, but we hope to get to a point where students from law, politics, and business have their own degrees centered around a space project. Why? Because on the African continent, it is important that we have future decision makers and policy makers who are aware of space science and engineers who are aware of all the other aspects. Of course, this circle doesn't close to these three. We would like to extend it, but this is like a proof of concept idea. If this works, then we can extend. Uh, let's go back in terms of what we have, where we come from. Uh, in the 80s, there was a military program. Uh, there was actually launch capabilities. Unfortunately, in 94, it was the commission. Uh, then, between 92 and uh, 98, students in Stellenbosch built uh, Sunset. Sunset built, uh, uh, was built by students in Stellenbosch University. And uh, you can read the specs. It has reached end of life already. Um, we count that as history slash experience, <coughs> where between 05 and 06, in just about 15 months, Sumadila so site was built, look at the mass, and look at what it's capable of doing. And I don't know how many of you arrived through this airport. Sumadila so can actually take pictures in 15 months, it's quite fancy. It's also pretty much at the end of life. Um, in the present, these are the projects that uh, we're working on. It includes QB50. I don't want to get into detail because it's been mentioned so many times, but I want to draw attention to the fact that Stellenbosch and CPU TFSATI are contributing to, to QB50, but Stellenbosch is leading and contributing 15 ADCS bundles towards QB50 CubeSets. Uh, that's the kind of things we're working on. Uh, the, the QB1 and 2 are led by CPU Tefsati and Stellenbosch is, is collaborating. Uh, the QB1 was launched um, 20, on the 21st. It was one of the many exciting launches. We got Beacon. It is alive and it was given a name, uh, Tepiso, which means promise. 
it was a big party, the first African nano satellite. It's a quite a big deal, we're part of history. It's cool, isn't it? Uh, we have outreach activities that are not only centered in South Africa, but this, uh, okay, I'm not sure, one is Zambia, the other is Namibia. Not sure which is which, but this was in Hermanus in South Africa. Um, CANSATs to us are a vehicle of education, outreach, and somewhat commercial uh, venture because at CPUTF Saturday we got orders for CANSATs and it was developed and sold. It's number of things you can do with the CANSATs. <laughs> you will make money. In terms of partnerships, what we have is different types of partnerships. Inter-university partnerships, we have evidence of the fact that it's a good thing because we had the semi-finalists of MIG-1, uh, two winning categories of MIG-2, uh, that was the students uh, and the business. Uh, we have satellites, that is evidence that this is a good thing. Research uh, institutions and universities partnerships, one of the evidence that is a good thing is me and the fact that we have many publications because of hybrid creations. Uh, we have uh, university and industry partnerships. Also publications come from that because you have a number of uh, um, things that you... you, uh, you uh, an industry may need some testing that the university knows how to do, and the university may need some money that industry has, and we have bursary projects that come from this which also is evidence that it's a good thing. Now, that's what we come, that's where we come from and what we have. The way forward is to look in the Southern Africa region, what is it that who has, where are the strengths and weaknesses, and then identify who needs what and who wants what. When we know that, we can now, because we have seen the good things that some partnerships can do, propose some partnerships and then strengthen our core knowledge. This is important because we need to keep the human capacity that is being built. Not being selfish, but to keep it strong enough that it can be effective and useful. Then we can, once we get to this point, we have a very strong engineering leg of the big picture that I showed you at the beginning. And we can now include the business, the political science, and so much the, the, the other branches that we can extend in a way that can grow. But this is not a cycle. When I say we visit one and two, is to investigate how well it worked to see whether we need to change the model in order to make it effective to expand. Now, in conclusion, um, much work needs to be done. That is something we need to acknowledge. It's not going to be easy, but I guess this is boring. Uh, and the role of UNICEF Southern Africa at the continental extent. I would like to acknowledge a couple of people who contributed to build what we have at South African National Space Agency and UNICEF in general. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of my story. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.